We've got a problem. For the first time ever, we have a new challenger in the UFC who has no credible opponents to fight. And awkwardly, this guy is already a champion. Well, an interim champion. That man is Tom Aspinall. John Jones won't fight him. Stipe Miocic won't fight him. And so he's left with a division that's been broken several times since the departure of Francis Ngannou. This has never happened before in the UFC's entire history. Every champion since a division has been established has at the very least had a former champion to help pass along the torch. This isn't just about Aspinall. This isn't just about Jones or Stipe. This is about the future of an entire division. I'm Bailey from MMA on Point, and I'm asking, are we witnessing the biggest waste of talent in UFC history? By the way, before we get started, just want to say a big thank you to all our channel members and Hall of Famers out there. We really appreciate all the support you guys give us, but let's jump into this mess. It is a natural process for new contenders each year to rise from the rankings, establish themselves as the new top guy, and then get their opportunity to prove it by dethroning the champion. I mean, that is literally how the sport is supposed to work. 99% of the time, that is what happens. In real time, you witness an exchange of skill in the cage and then an exchange of championship belts. Through a series of events though, the UFC heavyweight division is what you might call triple screwed. And the interim heavyweight champion, Tom Aspinall, might very well be the best in the world, but he is not getting a chance to prove that. There's a great scene in the movie Aviator where Leonardo DiCaprio's character essentially loses his shit. The real war. Why the hell do they look so slow? This isn't what it was like up there. They look like a bunch of goddamn models. Now, they're trying to make a movie, but the way they film their planes on a completely overcast white background means that they look like they're just floating in the sky. You can't perceive any information about how they are moving or how fast they're going, because there's nothing for your eye to just measure against it. Without something standing still behind the planes, We've got no idea of how fast we're moving. We got no sense of relative motion. And this is a big throwback, by the way, to one of Jason's old videos, if you guys remember. But what has this got to do with anything? Well, think of it as the perfect analogy for our current situation. John Jones is looking to retire. Stipe Miocic is looking to retire. So who does Tom Aspinall have moving forward to carve out his legacy against? Curtis Blades? At this point, that is literally as good as he can get if both those guys retire. I have no idea what happened. Uh, I'm frustrated. Like, no one wants to win like that. It's an awkward place to be for any kind of sporting world, but how did we get into this mess? And, well, it all kind of goes back to Francis Ngannou. Right, Okamoto with ESPN alongside the <laughs> UFC's new heavyweight champion. What in the world is going through your mind right now? Man, crazy. Uh, I can't even think straight, you know. First off, we had a beautifully clean transition between champions with Stipe Miocic and Francis. Perfect, right? No controversy. Francis was now even the lineal heavyweight champion, which means you could trace that back to the beginning of UFC history. But almost immediately, things go sideways. A lengthy contract discussion began with the UFC, and Francis, for various reasons, wasn't happy with the deal he was being offered and wanted more out of his contract. With a good faith, this is not a problem at all. This problem can be solved even now or in two days. But I don't feel like the UFC still want me to stay. I mean, so we are supposedly an independent contractor. There's a lot of things, man. We have no, no insurance, nothing, which I understand for independent contractor, but treat me as such then. They hold you like in captivity, like you can't do anything. You have no right. The contract is one-sided. So in the meantime, the UFC just went and booked their other top heavyweight prospect, Cyril Garn, in an interim title fight. That was already a bit of an abnormal situation for the division, for the champ to be, well, barely a few months from his last title defense and for an interim title already to be on the line. Eventually, though, Francis and Cyril did get to fight for the undisputed belt as Ngannou decided to fight out his last fight on his UFC contract. Now, in the scheme of the division, this was great and they were definitely the two best guys at the time. And although in the end it wasn't the best fight, we got a definitive answer once again. Francis Ngannou is the best heavyweight in the world. But then things get proper fucked for the first time. What's happened next? I don't know. A lot of things is out of my control. I just lay back and see what's happened. And then I take whatever come my, comes my way. Ngannou is, as of today, as of yesterday, as of whenever, he's a free agent and he can fight wherever he wants. Francis Ngannou 
has vacated his UFC title. Nganu is no longer on the UFC roster. We offered Francis a deal that would have made him the highest paid heavyweight in the history of the company. More than Lesnar, more than anybody. Um, and he turned the deal down. Ultimately, Nganu, the heavyweight champion, decides to leave the UFC. There is no longer someone holding that title. And more importantly, no one got to beat him on the way out. No one got to prove they were the better man and establish themselves as that new top guy. Now, maybe that wouldn't have been too much of an issue if it wasn't for what then happened next. John Jones, the light heavyweight champion, of course, then decided he was going to make his long-awaited debut at heavyweight. And we had all hoped it would be against Francis Ngannou, but the Jones fight was basically never going to happen. Which left the guy who'd already lost in the title fight, Cyril Garn, to fight John for the vacant title. It had taken John three years to transition to heavyweight and get a title fight. And in the end, he made the fight look incredibly easy against Cyril Garn. And JBJ submitted him in just two minutes. The division had a new champion, and although he didn't take the belt off Ngannou, we knew a few things. John was indeed the best heavyweight left in the UFC, with his legacy backing him up and a performance like that. This still wasn't really an ideal situation, though. I think for a lot of fans at the same time, having John Jones as the heavyweight champion was pretty iconic anyway. You know, one of the most dominant fighters ever now going to take on a whole new division and extend his legacy even further. And the best place to start, at least according to John, was to fight perhaps the greatest UFC heavyweight of all time in Stipe Miocic. But it's definitely arguable that he shouldn't be getting a title shot coming off that loss to Francis and having been just completely inactive in the division since then. But of course, none of that matters because Stipe Miocic Miocic is a legend, John Jones is a legend, and people want to see legends fight each other. It did just seem a bit like all of the other contenders in the division had basically been fighting for nothing for the last three years, and all of the rankings were being thrown out the window in favour of this fight. Things might have shifted back to normal pretty quickly though, but of course, as the MMA gods would foresee after booking the fight with Stipe and John, John tore his pectoral muscle and he was out and injured for several months. He was wrestling and... He tore the tendon that connects your pec to the bone. Eight months, gonna need surgery, he's out. Well, that's just great, isn't it? But with the champion out, it didn't leave the UFC with a lot of choice. And instead of involving Stipe Miocic, they booked Tom Aspinall versus Sergei Pavlovich in an interim title fight. Now, in a situation where the champ is injured, an interim title fight makes all the sense. It was kind of strange, however, that it didn't involve the original title challenger. The problem is it kind of felt like just putting a plaster on an already septic wound. Apparently, the UFC didn't even pick up the phone to call Stipe Miocic. But to be fair, if he'd gone in against Sergei or Tom and lost, you would never have had the John Jones fight, and that will be a massive seller. So it's not an ideal situation, but both Sergey and Tom have a chance to prove their championship level. At least both these guys had been on absolute killer runs in the division. The interim title's on the line, that's something, and Tom managed to deliver. Leg kicks will pay dividends. Oh! On its own, that stands out as a fantastic performance against a really scary challenger that was on a six-fight knockout streak. All he needed now was a shot at the champion, but it just wasn't happening. And during all of these crazy happenings, he'd gone from a quiet contender who wanted to let his fight in do the talking. They're always pushing you to call someone do out. One. Sorry? Call someone out looking for No, I, I keep calling people out and they never give me what I want. To appearing on podcasts and making it clear he wanted to be the man to beat John. Like we need to unify the title right now. There's two heavyweight champions in the world and in my opinion, this is not right. This is not boxing. You, you don't have multiple champions in a weight. None of them two are going to fight me, mate. Let's, get, let's be honest. Let's be honest. No, none of them two are going to fight me. Why do you think they don't want to fight you? I'm too dangerous, man. I'm too risky, I'm too risky. Simple, I'm too risky for these guys. John just didn't seem impressed with Tom at all and said stuff like he needed to get more notable and credible wins on his record. I don't know if we'll ever fight, you know, right now my goal is to, is to have one more big fight against Stipe Miocic and then kind of hang it up from there. But there's just no way he could do that. Francis had KO'd a bunch of former UFC champions on his way to the title and the GOAT of the division in Stipe Miocic. Tom, well, he got to beat Andrei Olovsky, who was a UFC champion about 20 years ago. And I'm not having a go, and it's not like the UFC just gave him easy matchups. There just aren't any UFC champions left in that division, apart from John Jones and Stipe. I don't know what he wants. It has now been five months since the making of this video that 
that Tom Aspinall has held on to interim gold, and over a year that John Jones has been the UFC heavyweight champion, and he's been unable to make one title defense. I don't know if his recent interaction with John was anything to go by, but Jones didn't even want to do a stare down with him. All the best. We'll do a quick picture. Sure. Yeah. Let's get it. A face off. No, Just no, a, no, no, okay. No, no, no problem. No, no problem. I know that's also him staying true to his word with the Stipe fight. But, I mean, are we just going to ignore all those times John stared down with Francis in the PFL? Look, Tom might be one of the best prospects of all time. He's got absolutely tons of potential, that's for sure. But doesn't it just feel like such a waste? And even if you think Tom Aspinall isn't that great, that's fair criticism, we haven't even seen him win the undisputed title. The bigger problem this creates isn't even about him. It's about the whole division. If both Jones and Stipe only fight each other and ride off into the sunset without fighting the next top guy, this division is devastated. Outside of Aspinall and Blades, there isn't much going on here at the top. Not much in the way of prospects either. If Aspinall gets his shot and wins, there is some credibility left for the division to sustain itself on. If he doesn't, well, then at least it's settled. Jones and Stipe went out as the two best guys. Is he better than John Jones? I don't know, but he has absolutely ran through everybody else. The Curtis Blades rematch is there. That was a weird fight that ended in an injury, but Curtis has been beaten previously by multiple title challenges. There's a fight with Cyril Garn, but he's already had two failed attempts at the undisputed title. And why did I say this is the biggest waste of talent in UFC history? Since Ngannou left the division, things have been pretty much fucked, and not only did we lose the lineal MMA heavyweight championship, but then when the new champion arrived, John Jones, he's just not even been able to defend the title. And now we're left in this shit situation. For now, he's just sat with a fake belt that won't even guarantee him a shot at the real one. When there are literally no big names or big fights left for you to beat, no former UFC champions left in your entire division, apart from the two that won't fight you, you know there's a problem. Have a think about this one for me as well before we go. Just how many UFC champions have achieved greatness without first beating greatness themselves? All right then, well, I knew before I started this video, some of you would be saying, Alex, Balian, you're biased, mate. And maybe I am, okay? I am English, and yeah, I was happy when Tommy Aspinall won the belt. But this video isn't trying to make you believe Tom Aspinall is the best fighter around, okay? We don't know that. He hasn't had a chance to prove it. That's literally the point. But all I'm saying is put your biases aside, whether you're English or not. This is a fucked up situation for the heavyweight division that we have found ourselves in. And it was worth talking about. Shout out to Hall of Famers as well. You guys support our content every single week. Okay, we appreciate you. If you want to join them, guys, you get access to the unedited podcasts, the writers meeting, a bunch of other cool stuff. Button is down below if you want to click it and link is in the description as well. Either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed the discussion. If you want to leave a comment down below, give your thoughts. Of course, we want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. I want to argue with you. I'm not really going to do that. But give us a like if you enjoyed the video. You can also subscribe if you want to see more videos from us and you aren't subbed here to the channel. Tom Aspinall, he's screwed isn't he really the the division screwed life is screwed you know my life screwed bye